I'm over Thai, this is Sapina when I welcome you. In this video, I'm discussing my learnings from Middle Discourses 99. This is with Subha, Subha Sutta. It's an interesting discourse about uh, some fundamental differences between lay life and monastic life, which is better. Uh, so let's see what Buddha's perspective is. So there was this Brahmin student, uh, Subha. Uh, <clears throat> and Subha uh, was there uh, in the Savatthi, the same place where Buddha was residing. So Subha went up and met the Buddha and uh, uh, Subha said that Master Gautama, the Brahmins say that the lay people, people who are like householders, like you and me, right? They succeed in the system of the skillful teaching, not renunciates. Renunciates are like the monastics, the monks and the nuns who get, go forth from their lay life to homelessness. They take a, uh, you know, go into the, become a monk or a nun. So uh, Subha's question was, that Master Gautama, the Brahmins say that lay people succeed in the system of skillful teaching, not renunciates. Now, what do you say about this? So, Buddha says that on this point, student, I speak after analyzing the question, not definitively. That means, I cannot give you a definite answer or yes or no answer. Now, Buddha says, hear this. Buddha says, I don't praise wrong practice for either lay people or renunciate. Because of wrong practice, neither lay people nor renunciate succeed. In the system of the skillful teaching. I praise the right practice for both lay people and renunciates. Because of right practice, both lay people and renunciates succeed. Now, here Buddha is saying the importance of right practice. And not the fact that someone is a lay person or someone is a householder. So, that is one big difference that, you know, and this, you know, I draw, I, I, I uh, kind of uh, uh, can resonate with this is because you know, I've had this always this fascination of becoming a monk and, you know, um, living my lay life and, you know, because of maybe my past life impressions or whatever. So, this is where I realized in Buddha's teaching is that, see, lay people also, they have their practice and Buddha suggested the practice for them. For monks, they also have. Later in the discourse, definitely Buddha is saying that the renunciates have an edge over the lay people because they don't have so many responsibilities. But the important thing about Buddha is saying that it's not that it's right practice that is important. Right grasping of the teachings and practice that is important. Not that you are practicing as a renunciate, then you will only get the enlightenment. Right? So the importance is the right practice. For, the, for getting the right practice, you want you need to know the teaching. What Buddha is teaching, you need to know. Right? If you practice without knowing what is Buddha's teaching, you just take some stuff from somewhere and think that, okay, this is what I should be practicing. No, you have to spend some time reading, understanding, reading the suttas, right? So, and getting a sense of the teaching and then practicing it. That is more important. So, um, uh, Subha said, Master Gautama, the Brahmins say, since the work of the lay life has many requirements, duties, issues and undertakings, it is very fruitful. But the, since the work of the uh, uh, work of the lay renunciate has less requirements, it is not fruit fruitful. So Buddha said, no, it is not like that. It's not like that. It's basically the what your practice you do, that is important. So then uh, Subha says, next question, Master Gautama, the Brahmins prescribe five things for making merit and succeeding in the skillful. So what are the five Buddha asked? Master Gautama, they say the truth is the first thing, fervor is the second thing, celibacy is the third thing, recitation is the fourth thing, generosity is the fifth thing. Right? So he says that these are the five things that uh, are important. I'm just kind of skipping things which are like uh, two verbos. Uh, Then, uh, then Buddha talks about five hindrances. What are the five hindrances? Hindrances of sensual desire, ill will, dullness, drowsiness, restlessness and remorse and doubt. These are five hindrances. This has already appeared in many other discourses. Then Buddha talks about the five kinds of sensual stimulation. Sights known by the eye that are likable, uh, sounds, smells, tastes. These are the five kinds of sensual stimulation. Then, then uh, Subha asks, of the five things that the Brahmins prescribe for making merit, like that we discussed just now some time back, what would you say is the most fruitful? So there Buddha said one clear direct thing, which is generosity. Buddha placed a lot of importance on generosity. 
Then Buddha said that Buddha shared a kind of analogy and said that sixth ground is compassion. Compassion is also one of the sixth ground for making merit. Now, then Supa came to this question that out of the five things that Brahmins prescribe for making merit and succeeding the skillful, where do you usually find them? Amongst lay people or enunciates? Right? So these five qualities or maybe six qualities in adding compassion, what do you find? Where do you find it more? Between in the lay people or the renunciates? So here Buddha says mostly among renunciates and less so amongst lay people. For a lay people has many requirements, duties, issues, undertakings, and they can't always tell the truth, be fervent, be celibate, do lots of recitation, or be very generous. Buddha is now, again, see, Buddha is a real, realist. And this is where Buddha is bringing out the, the, the kind of, uh, the tyranny of a lay life. You know, having all the responsibilities and work and being in a job and everything. It's difficult for them to always be, speak truth, uh, be fervent, be celibate. If you are a married person, that it's difficult to be celibate. Right, and plus time constraints because a lay holder, since he has so many responsibilities, he doesn't have time. But Buddha says a renunciate has few requirements, duties, issues, undertakings, and they can always tell the truth, be fervent, be celibate, do lots of recitation, be very generous. Of the five things that the Brahmins prescribe for making merit in succeeding in the skillful, I usually find them amongst renunciates and less among lay people. So, Buddha is, I think, presenting the picture, clear picture here that it is definitely easy for the renunciates to practice the path as compared to lay people. But it is not that the lay people cannot practice. As lay people, we can also practice the, the entire thing. What I feel from my perspective is that sometimes we start off putting ourselves at very high standards. And then when we fail from those standards, we feel bad. So, we should always, as lay people, whatever practice that we are doing, in being a lay life, we should be kind to ourselves, right? That whatever we are doing is we are trying our best, right? And not be kind of, you know, self-punishing in our mind that, you know, we should, I should have been more diligent and all. Because of the kind of inherent challenges that lay, that are there in the lay life. Okay. Then, then Buddha says, the, I say that the five things prescribed by the Brahmins for making the merit, are the prerequisites. What are the five things that were prescribed? First, truth. Second, fervor. Third, celibacy. Fourth, recitation. Fifth, generosity. So, Buddha is saying all these five things are prerequisites for the mind, for developing a mind free of enmity and ill will. Okay. Then, then there is this thing that uh, Subha asks the Master Gautama. I have heard that ascetic Gautama uh, knows the path to company of with a company with the Brahma. So the, the, he is basically uh, uh, Buddha says, yes, I know the path and I can tell you the path. So then Buddha is saying the path which is appearing in other discourses as well that a mendicant meditates, spreading a heart full of love to one direction, second direction, third direction, fourth direction, above, below, across, everywhere. They spread a heart full of love to the whole world, abundant, expansive, free of en enmity and ill will. Uh, when the hearts released by love has been developed like this, any limited deeds they have done does not remain or persist there. Now, Buddha is giving the example of a horn blower. Horn blower. Suppose there was a powerful horn blower, they would easily make themselves heard in the four quarters. In the same way, when the hearts released by love has been developed there like this, any limited deeds they have done don't remain or persist there. This is the path to the company of the Brahma. However, in the earlier discourse, this is, I think, 99 and 98, Buddha said that, uh, 98 or 97, Buddha said that uh, that should not be the goal. Right? The goal should be to get fully extinguished. And in this, achieving in this means, uh, in on this path to achieving that goal of arahanship or Nibbana, if this happens, like you come in the company of the Brahma, then that we find. But this cannot be the goal of the practice. Okay. So, after hearing this, Subha was like very happy and, and he, his, his, he, he kind of the darkness lifted from his consciousness and he said he became a lay follower of the Buddha. So, this is basically uh, uh, Middle Discourse 99 uh, with Subha and uh, has its pointers uh, for lay life and householder uh, 
as a mendicant but one thing i have like personally kind of decided is that it's not necessary to be a mendicant uh, to be if you are a mendicant if you are practicing as a mendicant uh, uh, and you don't kind of lead the life the right practice and this is what i have observed with many of the monasteries in the sanghas and especially when i visited sarnath i i had this observation uh, especially you can check my videos on uh, sarnath and my learnings from sarnath visit uh, they i have made two part videos on that so this was my learning i saw bhikkhus who were just there uh, in, enjoying you know spending time checking their mobiles and everything that is not the right practice if you have to become a bhikkhu and do that then might as well be a lay person only and as a lay person we can do several things uh, in our practice uh, we have a lot of scope to do that we have to just adjust our time uh, our time schedules and everything be in a sangha come in a company of uh, people who practice uh, uh, and you know we can do our practice so i hope this was useful this video was useful it had some insights for you do share your thoughts insights in the comment section thank you for watching namo buddhaye namo